Good evening, everybody. It's KB5 MIQ Big Boy Take Two. <laughs> ah, this big head sometimes I can't get all the words out to come out right that I'm trying to say. And I said a couple of things completely wrong. One of them for sure is going to sound bad. Anyway, we've got a couple of subjects we're going to talk about this week. Uh, first off, we've got uh, several ham fests coming up. Uh, four states having radio tailgate sales coming up. Uh, Emory's coming up, and there's one in Baytown, I know for sure, so there'll be some slides at the end of this that's got all that on it. Uh, hey, Ham Radio Cat, let's try you again. You even made a cameo in the first one there, so there you go. Hop up there, Cat. Now, uh, go talk about a couple of things. This is where I messed up the first time I took this video. I had a social media post about a guy asking about what do you do for band plans, what do you keep on your table for reference books, the reference stuff like that. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go back again. I've showed these before, but I'm gonna bring them up again. I use the Nifty Quick Reference Guides. I like these, they're spiral, they're waterproof, they're, they're real tough. You, you take them out on field day events with you and they hold up real good. That's the uh, Nifty Band Plan. Also use the Nifty DX Field Reference. This has got all your prefixes for all your different countries. Makes it a lot quicker. I got the map on the wall, but these old eyes, I can't read it that quick anymore. And I got the uh, Nifty book for my 897D, which makes a good quick reference for uh, getting into your radio. Okay, I had a... Uh, been chatting with a, one of my listeners this week, KI5 YKQ out of Oklahoma, Glenn. He had a little antenna issue. We was able to, between me and the group, we was able to get him some answers, get him helped out. He's new general. Uh, been doing some HF work. He's doing real good. Glenn, glad you got that general. I'm glad you're getting on HF. And I hope I'll work you so, soon one day. We'll try to get on 40 meters one day since Oklahoma and Texas are too close together. All right. The subject for today. And I'll make a point why I'm redoing this video here in a minute. But uh, And this may turn into be another grounding, lightning, and CW versus non-CW subject. But I'm going to try to keep it lighthearted. Coaxial cable. Um, this is because of stuff I come across looking online this week. So I thought I'd talk about it just a little bit. I'm not going to get in to telling you exactly what particular cable you should use or shouldn't use. I'm not going to discuss loss per foot and velocity factors and all of that. Um, I'm going to use my application, how I've been using it for years and what I do. Uh, WD5HKV is kind of the same way. In fact, I, I got a lot of this stuff from him. He's been my Elmer for years. Um, if I keep an antenna, let me back up a little bit. You've got three basic parts to your system. Transceiver, feed line, and antenna. And they're all equally important. And probably, in all honesty, the feed line is probably the most important. Don't matter how good a radio you got or how good an antenna you got, if you can't get the signal from the radio to the antenna, none of it matters. If I keep from antenna connection to the back of the radio connection less than 100 feet, and I don't use an amp. I've never used an amp. Uh, I've had a problem with some good quality RG8X. That's really all I've ever used. Uh, I like it. It's uh, easy to handle. It's easy to put ends on. If you're putting your own ends on it. Excuse me. But I, I like it. And that's just my rule of thumb. I'm not telling you to use it. I know there's people going to say, well, this is better. This is better. And that that's fine. Just want you to make your own decision, do some research on it. The farthest antenna I have from my shack is a four band dipole, and it's about a 120 foot feed line run. And this is where I made the mistake in the last video. What I've got about the first 75, 80 foot of it is a piece of very old RG213. I said RG13, I was when I was checking the video, I thought, oh man, this is going to cause problems, so I decided to reshoot it, so 
an old piece of 213, but I got it terminated into about a 25 foot piece of RG8X getting it in the shack. Had good luck with it. I really have. Uh, Main Trading Company sells his generic assemblies and sells cable experts. Of course, cable experts a little higher than the other, but I've used a generic and had good luck with it. Here's the point I'm trying to make though on picking your coax out. And if you're going to run an amp or if your antenna's further away than what I'm talking about, upgrade your coax. Go to something better. And it's real easy to figure out what's better than RG8X. But, try to buy your coax from a reputable dealer like MTC. The reason I say this, I got to look it online the other day on Amazon. And I just done a search on coaxial cable and I started getting hits back. 50 foot run of RG8X with the PL259s already on it. $10.99 to $15. I'm sitting there thinking, alarm bells went off. Man, Look at it like this. If it sounds too good to be true, it either ain't true, which I'm not saying Amazon's lying. If you send them $11, they're going to send you a 50 foot piece of coax. Is it going to be good coax? I highly doubt it. Now, I do know the majority of our gear does come from China. I do know that. But I got to read some of the specs on that coax, and it was some very, very small copper center conductors. And I just don't think that that is where you need to save money on the coax. That, I've heard people talk about truck stop coax. That they've got at truck stops that was bad. Okay, remember this. You know, if you see RG6, that's 75 ohm coax. And I know people use it and for transmission lines. I'm not saying you can't. I know what you fact. The repeater we had up in the 90s here in Red River County, the guy who built it used two runs of RG6 Hardline we got free from a cable TV company. They had two spools left that they didn't want to take a chance on running and splicing. They gave them to us and it was just enough to, for him to set our, our repeater up using it. And it worked fine. Not saying, not telling you not to use it. I prefer to use 50 ohm coax for antennas I run. That's just me. But if you got a long run, or you're going to run an amp, you need to consider upgrading your coax. And I'm not going to lie to you, if I have a blowdown and I have to start over somewhere, I'll probably change a little better coax the next go around. But I'm still running my RG8X and have good luck with it. All I want you to remember is this, consider where you buy it at, because that's a big deal. I've never seen any of the reputable ham companies sell what I would call really that inferior coax. That's the only point I'm trying to make because I'm cheap, but there's some things that are too cheap to buy. All right, well, that about covers everything I can think of for this week. Uh, remember, Main Trading Company in Paris, Texas. I know I keep talking about the amount of used gear he's got, but he has got a ton of it up there. And a lot of some pretty good looking rigs he's got on his used website up there. There'll be the slides about the upcoming uh, ham fest and tailgate sales. Uh, appreciate everybody who subscribed to the channel. We're at 8.53, and uh, as soon as we hit get close to 900, we're going to do another giveaway. And I keep forgetting to turn this remote on. This is KB5MIQ, big boy, 73.